Hello everyone. My name is Sylvie and thank you for uh, watching this video or your interest on how to decorate your envelopes that I decorate mine I decorated for Christmas. So on how to foil and make envelopes. Um, some people in the group, actually I should start by with all of you in the group who had wonderful things to say. I appreciate it and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I was floored by the response. Um, and I'm still, I think, reeling in from that. That was my first ever post that I've, I've made in any group. And because of the questions that I was asked on how to, to do this, I thought I would do a quick video and hopefully answer all of the questions that I received. The majority of you asked how do I get my images onto my cardstock? Well, that's very easy. Um, a lot of you guessed and a lot of you were right. It's a Stampin' Up! stamp set that I use called Ornamental Envelopes. Um, I've been using this stamp set for about three years now and I normally heat emboss with embossing powder. But this year, because I bought the mink recently, I thought I would give it a shot by stamping it on cardstock and see how it came out with foil. And as you can see, it came out great. I was really, really happy with it. Very impressed, um, thrilled. I have no words. You know, I'm able to even use my return address stamp and stamp it on there and have it come out looking really, really well. So for we're going to need a few things first. We're going to need a paper trimmer, a scoreboard, and a stamping platform. This one, a stamping platform is probably going to work better because I, I myself am going to stamp this image three, at least three times to ensure that my image is very, very black and that the toner will um, put a really good layer of ink on my cardstock when I run it through the photocopier. So let's start. We're going to need the paper trimmer first. We need a piece of cardstock that is eight and a half inches square. That's going to be the basis for this. This, what we're doing right now is basically making a template for your envelope. So we're going to do any stamping we need to do, any writing with the Sakura glaze pens that you want to do. This is the process that you're going to do, or this is how you're going to make that template. So our eight and a half inch piece of cardstock. Now the cardstock I'm using, because I received some questions about this, is from a brand that I buy on Amazon. It's called Accent Opaque. Um, I'll be honest, cardstock on Amazon these days goes up and down like the stock market. I normally get this for $19.99 for 250 sheets. It's 65 pounds. And I have seen it go as high as a hundred and some odd dollars. Um, that was at the height of COVID because shipping and staff shortages or companies were closing down because of COVID. They were putting a big, big price tag on, on their cardstock. And I won't say it's the brand, the company, it's the sellers on Amazon raised their prices. So that is something to keep in mind. When it's on sale here in Canada for about $19.99 or 20 bucks, I usually buy two or three reams. This way I know I'm covered because it does go out of stock quite fast. It also comes in 80 pound and 110 pound. The 80 pound also has a super smooth finish. If you, if you want the super smooth, they have a super smooth finish for, for your images, for, for whatever it is that you need it to be. Um, this is just basic cardstock. There's no finish on it. It's just smooth smooth cardstock is what it's called uh, So that that's that little bit on the cardstock I do prefer this over Michaels because I find Michaels to be a little dingy in comparison to this and when I buy all three of the card weights because I use them not only for my card fronts my card bases and for envelopes it's all going to match. The colors are all going to be the same because with 
if you buy from one brand to another brand, you're going to have various tones of white and you may not like the look of it. So this way I just know I'm going to have all the same color, all the same brightness. Okay, so we're going to use our scoreboard first to mark off our stamping area. If you don't have a triangle, that's fine. I can help you with that. Or if you even have a narrow scoreboard, I'll also help you with that because uh, I don't think you need to uh, buy anything special. This just came with it. This is a Martha Stewart uh, board that I bought years and years ago and it still works for the purpose that I need it, which is the, the envelopes mostly. So to make an A2 envelope, we're gonna need to score this at three inches and three and five eighths. An A2 envelope is gonna uh, accommodate a card that's four and a quarter inches by five and, and a half inches. Um, I prefer these versus store-bought simply because my cards that I make are uh, a little thicker than normal and using store-bought envelopes, I just cannot get my cards in there without uh, it ripping, tearing, what have you. So these are a little bit, you get a little bit more space this way if you're looking into the envelope. Okay, so let's score at three inches. Three and five eighths. The three and five eighths is going to be your long end, which is your front or your top flap and your bottom flap. The three inch score marks are for your side flaps. I've even had to go and mark it with a felt pen because I was, was always screwing up. It's something I'm known to do. So there we go. That's our scored cardstock for right now. We're going to put this away. We are going to use it again. So just want you to know that. The stamping platform I'm using is called a, a Smart or a Stamp Buddy Pro, I believe it is. So, and, and I do have a Stamparatus and I have another small one. The Stamparatus, I, I needed something a little longer because I found it was just cutting off when I was trying to, to stamp and I, I didn't like that. I had this one before the Stamparatus and I really, really like um, how I'm able to have it open on two of the sides. So now you're gonna get your stamps out whichever ones you want to use. You don't have to do this just in the, for <clears throat> Christmas. Um, I do it all year round and I just find appropriate stamps for that purpose. I want you to know though, that before you use anybody's stamps, any company stamps, check and see if they have an angel policy on their website. Some of the designers do uh, Gina K, Stampin' Up, you name it, where they don't want you to photocopy their images. Um, that's basically altering the way it's supposed to be used. Um, I did contact Stampin' Up and I explained what I'm doing and, and they had no problem with it. Um, to them, it's, you know, using a toner copier is basically another form of ink. So they were Quite, a, quite okay, they were actually quite intrigued as to this process. So I think when I'm done, I'll send them a card with the envelope. So you wanna make sure, I should have mentioned this. You wanna make sure that your stamp doesn't go over the score marks on your cardstock, especially up here, because you're, there's gonna end up being a, a white gap between anything that you stamp here and anything that you stamp here, you're not gonna get a complete image. So I just wanted you to know that. And the left, and that's the left score mark, and we wanna to stay to the right of that. So I hope that helps you. You can do this, you can make, go ahead and make tons of masters, and then whenever you need it, 
just photocopy it when whatever color you need it to be whatever color cardstock and that's it that's all you need to do and then just put it together it's not that difficult it's a fairly easy process so as i mentioned i'm going to be using i'm going to be stamping about three or four times because i really want it to be black i don't want there to be any white um, any haze you know or not completely black um, i want it to be all black and if you do that you're not going to be able to tell the difference between your master and your photocopier um, i can't tell the difference on mine because i have my density on my photocopier set to max um, so but i shouldn't say so but if you happen to try and foil this it's not going to work obviously because it's just ink it's not it's not toner ink. The ink pad I prefer to use is Versifying Claire Nocturne. It's a it's a pigment ink and I like that because pigment ink in case some of you didn't know pigment ink sits on on your paper. It's a nice crisp image. With dye inks, um, dye inks are, are water-based and they tend to cause uh, bleeding or feathering around your image and if you're wanting to do foiling with this this is what um, I prefer to use simply because I'm not going to have to worry about any feathering or any any bleeding around my image so I should get a nice a nice coat of uh, foil and it'll look great look crisp it won't look like there's stuff that is jagged all around the image So. so we're just going to stamp that. See, you, I don't know if you can see right in there it's not completely stamped it's still a little light in the top of that bobble and there's a little bit of hazing on that other bobble there so that's why i stamp three or four times usually three does it that's all i really need to do you know and if you're doing something like this you want to make sure you're doing it well right like what's the point of doing it not well just to start over again I don't know it's getting better I can still see some that hasn't printed well so one more time I just re-inked my stamp pad. I may have to re-ink it again. I've tried doing this video about, uh, oh, I don't know, 14 times now. And I always screw up. And I don't know how to edit, so I have to do this in all one take. <laughs> Let me tell you, I have a new respect for anybody who videotapes and posts on YouTube. Real, I'm lost in this whole process. I was hoping my husband could help me out and he knows more about this tech stuff than I do. So he's gonna be helping me out after to put this video together for you so it looks a little bit more polished than the way I was doing it. There we go. So I'm just going to wipe the stamps off. You can tell that this stamp set is really well used. You know, heat embossing is great. I really like the look of it, but I find that when I'm using darker colored paper, that no matter how well I use that anti-static bag, I'm still going to have specks 
on my envelope somewhere or even on my card front because um, that's what I was originally using it for. And then when I started doing envelopes, it was just frustrating for me trying to use that little brush and get into all those little tiny places. It was, it, it just didn't look polished as, as much as I want it to look. So now we're gonna take our piece of paper that we've stamped. We're gonna turn it upside down because we're gonna be stamping our address, self-address envelope, our return address. If you can tell I'm nervous, then, you know, be nice. The stamps I bought, I have bought from Zazzle. Uh, they're really good. You can use one of their templates or totally create your own. Um, I, I like this one. I also have a, a round one for the back of my cards, and I have different, different address ones as well. What I did was I marked off the halfway point, and I did it all the way through. So I knew where I could position it on my cardstock because I have a tendency to either go a little left or a little right and, and that bothered me. So this is the way I can ensure my stamp is gonna be center to the flap. There we go. Now do yourself a favor, grab a pencil and put an M on the back of it. Just so you know that that's your master. And I overstamped a little bit there, <laughs> but that's okay. So walk over to your photocopier and take a photocopy of this. And we'll get started with the rest of the process. I already did that simply because my photocopier is at the other side of the room and I didn't want to um, take away from the video or add more time to the video. It was meant to be a very quick, very quick video for you guys. So this is our copy that we're going to be foiling. So we need to cut this down or you don't need to cut it down, but I cut it down before I foil it. Um, you can keep it this way until after you foil it, whichever works better for you. And we can run it through our mink. I have used a laminator. I used a laminator when I first got into this, uh, when I first got into foiling because uh, I just didn't have the money for uh, a mink. And uh, with all the money I was spending on supplies, uh, the mink was going to have to wait. But I, let me tell you, I drooled over all of your pictures of mink foiling that you have done. And I finally bit the bullet and said, yeah. So I ended up buying the small one, the six inch one. Um, I used that about three times and then I ended up buying the big one. And it's because I needed more to do this. I found the six inch one, the only way you could foil your envelopes was using an envelope like this already pre-fold, like fold it all together and ready to go. Um, I wouldn't put any tape there yet. But when I ran it through the small one, you could see the creases of the, of the seams in the back on your foil. Now, I haven't tried doing it since I bought the six inch one, but I was thinking you might, for those who have the six inch one, you might want to put a piece of cardstock inside your envelope and then try uh, feeding it through your, your small mink and see if that works better for you. I haven't tried that yet. I'm still gonna try that and see if that works. Uh, Cause my mink, my big mink is on my kitchen counter and it would just be nice to have the small one here on my desk, but we will see. Um, so for those of you who are also complaining about vellum, I did this just to show you this is Michael's vellum again it's nothing fancy um, and the photocopier did a great job on that I did make a, a vellum envelope just to see if it worked well and it, it really worked well so 
the only thing I can suggest for those who are having ghosting issues with your printer, if you're putting down a lot of foil or a lot of toner, like I did, when I try and copy more than four pages at a time, that's when I'll start getting ghosting or I'll see the bobbles, a little bit of the bobbles over here, that kind of thing. I think it's, you need to let the printer cool down a bit. And I, I did that, you know, I would do three or four and then I would just go and do my mink, you know, go put what I had through my mink, then come back and, you know, print off a few more. I found that when I did more than that, I was getting issues with the ghosting and the, you know, the specks and the dirt and stuff like that. So that's just a little tip that you may want to try out. Okay, so I'm going to stop this and I'm going to meet you in my kitchen so that we can mink. So here we are at my lovely kitchen counter. Um, I turned on the mink and I've got my cardstock ready to foil. I pre-cut my foil because I just wanted to save some time um, so you're not all getting bored. I'm going to foil the vellum and we'll foil the cardstock. I just want to show you the results that you can get with vellum paper as well. Okay. So what I do is pre-cut my pieces. It, I, maybe it's a lot of work for some people. I just don't like wasting anything. And I've got this very pretty blue that I purchased. What I'm using today is textile foil. Um, I was able to find a company in Canada um, that, that has unbelievable colors and patterns. So I thought, okay, I'll try it out. And I liked it, so I bought some more. So this little trick is thanks to Nancy Stamps. And, um, you know, she does mention you want to keep your cardstock and your foil free from any dust or fur, because we have fur babies. Um, anything that might be on the back of your foil or on the card front, or in this case, envelope. And it works out really, really well. The counter I know is a fur-free zone. My desk, not so much, because Toby, my cat, loves to sleep on it. And it doesn't matter how much I swift her, it doesn't matter how much I wipe it down or dust it. If I'm making you a card, you're gonna get a little piece of Toby in there, I guarantee you. So there's that piece. I'm also going to give you a little tip and this I learned from a woman in the group uh, called uh, named I shouldn't say called named Joy Chow and Joy does these unbelievable sketches of animals and I'm sure all of you have seen her her work on on the on the on the board Facebook profile or on the group board um, she mentioned to use a piece of regular card or carpet or copy paper. There, that's that's the name. And just to lay it on top. Before I started doing this, I was getting creases in my foil. I was getting uh, puckering with my foil and I was getting frustrated. So if a lot of you are getting frustrated because of those reasons, do yourself a favor and try a piece of copy paper. I think the copy paper um, helps keep the foil flat and doesn't cause any puckering or creasing. And I think you might be happier with the results. The transfer folder is the Heidi Mink, you know, the Heidi Swap Mink transfer folder that I use. Uh, some of you mentioned that yours is creasing or and warping mine does as well. You can see it's all creased and warping, but that's okay. It still does what it needs to do. And all I do is this to ensure there's no air in there that might get in underneath the foil and then cause it to um, crease or 
whatever the problem is. Sorry, I'm having a hard time finding my words. I brought the vellum in because I thought I would do the vellum for you just so you can see the results with vellum. It's the same thing. My mink is on uh, setting uh, three for this. I think it really depends on the cardstock you're using, the foil that you're using. Um, I think there are different uh, foil companies have different thicknesses of their foil. So if you're not getting good coverage with your laser cutter or your laser printer and your stamped images um, and your foiling, you may want to look at changing your foil and see if that helps you at all. Um, I know I was using some cheapy foil and though at first when I was using the laminator, it worked okay for me. But then as time went on and my skills got a little better, I just didn't like the look anymore. I thought it was just uh, not that great, you know. If you were taking the time to make a card or send a card to someone that you love or you care about, you know, spend that little extra bit of money so that they feel your love. And that is the blue foil. up on the camera. I'm very happy that I'm able to do my return address stamp also in foil. I, I, that I just, I'm tickled pink about that. So let's go on to the vellum. Let me say, I have a newfound respect for people who do this for a living. Um, me unknown, I, I, you know, I videotape for personal stuff, but never for something like this. I'm very shy when it comes to uh, showing off my skills. Okay. Again, very gently down. into the folder, squeeze out, and here we go. And I, I'm pretty sure a lot of you already know how to put the envelope together, but I'm still going to follow through and create the envelope for those who are unsure of how to do that. Um, I know when I started, I didn't know how to do it and you tend to feel intimidated and don't, you know, if you have questions, ask questions. We're all in this to learn as well. We're not all perfect in everything that we do. Even our crafts are not perfect, but then who would want perfect? You know, it, if it's not perfect, it's a little bit more unique. So you have to think of it that way. And I do. I do have the six inch mink and uh, after trying this a couple of times with the six inch, it didn't work because I had to pre-make my envelopes and then try and foil and it just didn't work. So if you're going to buy a mink or a laminator, I say try and save up and do yourself a favor, buy the mink big one. Um, buy them big anything you know if you're into die cutting and making cards and all that kind of stuff don't buy the small one buy the big one you can just do so much more with it you can cut so much more with die cutters the bigger die cutters as well
Okay. There we go. Yeah. And there is the bellum. I see there, right there, it didn't pick up. And that's a first. That's the first time that happened. How sad. Anyway, it's just an envelope. You have to remember that. <laughs> My husband said the same thing to me. I'd be, oh, like, no, look, it didn't do good. He says, it's just an envelope. <laughs> no one's going to notice. Yeah, but it's not the same. I notice. So there you go. That's the, the mink, the foiling. Worked out great. And I will meet you back in my den. Okay, back in the den. Let's finish these envelopes. So this is the one that we're working with. This is the cardstock one. This is the vellum one. So you want to make sure your design is upright. Your label, your address is up here, not down here or over here. And we're going to start with the three inch score. Now, I'm going to continue for, for the people who don't know how to make envelopes. It's really easy, folks. It's very easy. All we're going to do is take out these little triangle pieces where our lines intersect. And I do that from the back. have a corner rounder I don't know if you have one but if you have one those come in handy for rounding out the corners okay and let's get busy creasing so the bone folder that I use is this one it's a Teflon bone folder um, I used to use these because that's what came with my uh, scoreboard and it was good except I was noticing that on darker colors that there was a bit of a shine that was coming off on my cardstock and it started to bother me after a while so I finally bit the bullet and bought this this is their ergonomic one for people who have arthritis which is what I have so this works out really really well for me it's easier on your wrist too Everything that I'm mentioning in this video, I'm not trying to get you to buy anything else. These are just the products that I've used while making this video and the products that I use when I'm doing this for you know, my friends, my family, um, even my clients. So, so here I'm using the, the 10 millimeter one, which is the wider curve. you're all going to find a new appreciation for some stamps you probably haven't used in a while. You know, just like I said, contact the company that you bought those stamps for or from and uh, just ask if it's okay that you use it to photocopy. I think the stamps where you buy from places like Michael's or, you know, Joann's or Hobby Lobby, that kind of thing, I, unless it's, you know, 
you know, Hero Arts or a brand name that we all familiar with. Um, I don't think there really is any kind of policy. You can do what you want with those stamps. So, I, um, I always flip up the bottom flap because I find it's just poking up here and it's just something that doesn't appeal to me. So I do this. You don't wanna use anything wide, much wider than this because you run the risk of getting glue or tape onto your actual card and that would be a waste. That would be a shame. And there's my cat, Toby. Hey, Tobes. Next year, I think I'm going to be using labels or stickers here with our initials on it, as opposed to using double-sided tape, simply because <laughs> some people have made it well known to me that these envelopes are kind of hard to open because it is 65 pound weight, you know, it's hard to rip. I even bought a die here for here, you know, where you can just rip open from here, but then that would get in the way with this particular uh, stamp set that I put together. Uh, it would be right here. So uh, any other cards where I can put my name over here, I will definitely be using the zipper die for people to just rip it open. So there, that's your envelope. That's your foiled envelope. And it would be the same process for your uh, vellum. Um, I did have one put together. Let's see if I can find it. And the answer is probably no because my desk is a disaster. I finished all my Christmas cards and I still need to tidy it up. Yeah, no, I have no idea where it is. But they look great actually. And if you're using double-sided tape to put it together, you really can't notice it all that much, you know? So that's, I know a lot of people do uh, wedding invitations and save the date kind of stuff or uh, weddings, what have you, and this works great. At least in my book, it does. And for what I would use it for, it does. So that's it. I, I hope you all enjoyed this video. It's sort of long-winded, I suppose, a roundabout way to tell you how to, to do this. But I think a lot of you, once you saw me doing this, you probably went, ah, yeah, now I get it. And uh, I probably shut the video off. <laughs> and... Uh, that's it. But for those who didn't know how to make envelopes, I hope that also helps you. You know, don't ever be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. I know a lot of people say, I, I bought this and I haven't used it yet because I'm so afraid or I, I'm just not, I don't know that much. There is a, a, a website people called YouTube and believe it or not, there are a lot of people who uh, take the time to make these incredible videos to show you how to to do some things that you may want to do you know just go to YouTube pluck plunk in whatever it is that you're searching for and you know if it's looking for foiled envelopes or you're looking for how to use deco foil or even how to use the mink you know take a look it, it only takes a few minutes and don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's how you learn so at any rate, I'm going to end this video now and I hope you appreciate it and I thank you. So have a good day.